This girl ate 57 bags of flaming hot Cheetos. This is what happened to her. We open with the mother, Vicky, as she cradles her baby daughter, Charlie, before putting her to sleep in her crib. She exits back to her room with her husband, Andy. Oh my god. It's Zachy Efron's. Charlie looks up at the planets above. Then they begin to shake. Nearby, flowers start to catch fire. Andy senses something is wrong and goes to the room. The smoke inside was thick and choking, but Charlie was safe in her crib, sorta. Andy knocks away the burning planets and holds his precious Charlie. Then, something incredible happened. Charlie catches fire. Andy wakes up. It was all a nightmare. He heads to the kitchen where he finds his daughter is up as well, playing with a lighter. She also had a nightmare, but that's no reason to be messing with fire. He snatches it back before Charlie mentions she feels something weird changing in her body. Andy says that her mother might be better equipped to explain such things, but Charlie says she's not talking about those things. She means the other thing. Andy reminds her that when she gets stressed, she needs to calm down, breathe, and imagine herself in a happy place. With bunnies. Vicky wakes up and joins the family. Andy starts to cook up some pancakes as we cut to footage of an experimental trial. We see Andy and Vicky being probed by scientists. They're in college. Young. Broke. Wait, being in college already implies you're young and broke. And they're orphans. The scientists aren't just asking questions. They're asking if they've ever had strange experiences they can't explain. Experiences of the psychic variety. Vicky gets uncomfortable, but Andy reveals he witnessed their parents' car accident a week before it happened. Then, we cut to some horrifying results of the experiments. In the present, Andy sees a customer. He's a life coach. He had a client who was skeptical that she could quit smoking. She asked Andy how much he charged per session, and his answer was $100, which she found exorbitant. She said she'd rather go to a doctor's office than pay that much money for just talking. Andy told her that it worked, and he even offered to give the session for free if it didn't. So, she reluctantly agreed. Andy had her close her eyes and told her to imagine herself happy and addiction-free. When she opened her eyes again, Andy looked directly into them, then cracked his neck before telling her that she would quit smoking. With those words, the woman's pupils dilated as if something inside of her had clicked into place. The woman paid Andy for the session and left feeling better than ever before in her life. Afterward, Andy's eyes started bleeding. This is the cost of his power, which is being able to make people stop smoking. Meanwhile, Charlie attends biology class and dissects a frog. She has a question for the teacher, but the teacher says it's a dumb question and that she should just Google it. Everyone laughed at her. She couldn't use Google. Her parents didn't let her use the internet at home. Then, a boy to the right compared her family to the Amish and asked if they all share the same bathwater. Charlie became enraged, and the air around her began to heat up. But before things got catastrophic, she was able to calm herself down. At home, Charlie sulks in her room. Her mother comes to check on her. She doesn't want to go to school anymore, and she wants Wi-Fi. Her mother says that stuff rots your brains, and I can attest to that. Nonetheless, Charlie wants to be like the other kids and play Roblox and watch TikTok. What is happening to the world? Charlie reveals that today, a boy called her weird. Her mother insists she's not, but Charlie interjects. I'm worse, she says. No, you're special. Later, Vicky shares the revelation with Andy. He's perplexed by this turn of events, as it seems that Charlie had been able to suppress her powers for years now. But now that they've started to show up again, it was only a matter of time before the bad men came for her. If she loses control, flaming hot Cheetos would be the least of the world's concerns. Vicky suggests Andy pushes her. No, not literally. That's just what they call his power. He declines, because then the story would be over. I mean, it's the perfect solution, but he is hesitant to mess about with his own daughter's brain. What about teaching her to use her powers? Vicky counters. Andy is also against this, citing the damage it could cause. He reveals that he's recently started bleeding from his eyes, which can't be a good sign. All in all, he believes it's safer if she just cools down. <laughs> Wonder how that'll go. The next day at school, Charlie has an explosive situation in the bathroom after getting hit in the head with a ball. And no, not the kind of explosions you get after eating tacos. Her teacher witnessed everything and the authorities are called. At home, Andy and Vicky scramble to pack up. They gotta ditch town before the bad people find them. Charlie is in shambles. She doesn't understand what's happening. Andy reveals the truth. The internet doesn't actually rot your brain. They just don't let her use it so they don't get tracked. But none of that matters now. Her outburst is gonna get them all caught. Charlie has a temper tantrum. As her mom tries to calm her down, she sets her arms ablaze. Andy puts the fire out as Vicky collapses, wondering why she didn't just delete us the fetus. We cut to DSI headquarters, the people behind the experiments. They've caught wind of Charlie's outburst and send a middle-aged janitor after her. He used to, uh, clean these kind of things discreetly for the company. <laughs> At home, Andy wraps up the wounds before heading out with Charlie to get some ice cream. That ought to cool her down. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Meanwhile, Vicky runs into the janitor. He goes by the name Rainbird. 
He reads her mind and reveals that her family isn't the only one with powers. She launches a lamp at him, but completely misses the mark. She's rusty. I suggest aimbot. Vicky runs off and haphazardly flings random things at Rainbird. Eventually, he catches up, but Vicky does not submit. She warns him that he'll regret what he's doing. Once he sees Charlie, he'll know she's not like them. She's harder, better, faster, stronger. Great song, by the way. Andy and Charlie arrive home, with Andy going off to look for the missus. When he returns to the living room, he finds Charlie is being held captive. Rainbird hides his eyes behind a light while covering Charlie's. Without sight, their kind cannot use their powers. Andy gives it a shot anyway, and his eyes begin to bleed. With despair, Charlie asks where her mother is. Andy does not answer. She becomes exasperated, asking again and again. The room begins to heat up. The closet door loosens up, and Vicky's sleeping body slumps down. Unfortunately, she won't be waking up. Charlie explodes with a fiery rage, sending Rain Bird flying. <laughs> You'd think he was used to that. Then, the father-daughter duo flee. Meanwhile, the CEO of DSI goes to visit an old man in a nursing home, who turns out to be the creator of the serum that gives people powers. She tells him they found the super-powered family, but he's too busy playing arts and crafts to come back to work. She asks again, but he warns her not to mess with their daughter. Instead, he thinks they should put the girl down. If not, her powers could grow to the point of setting off nuclear explosions. A little excessive if you ask me, but okay. Back to the duo, Andy slept in his car while Charlie woke up early and went outside to play. She practices her powers. Turns out she's got telekinesis too. Then, she runs into a cat and wanted to pet it, but when she did, the cat attacked her. Typical. Without thinking, Charlie unleashed her crispifying powers. Andy woke up hearing the screams and ran over to see what happened. He saw what his daughter had done and took advantage of the opportunity to teach her a lesson. Using her powers must always be a decision, not a reaction. He then had her put the cat out of its misery. Wholesome. Andy and Charlie need to ditch their car so they don't get tracked. They wait on the side of the road for someone to pick them up, and a kind man, Irv, stops. But he's hesitant to drive them all the way to Boston. Andy offers him $100, and with a dash of telekinetic manipulation on top, he agrees. First, they stop at his house to rest, and Andy goes inside while Charlie goes to play with the chickens. Hopefully we don't get a repeat of earlier. Suddenly, Charlie hears voices in her head, and not the usual kind either. You know, the ones that tell you to steal things from the grocery store or not shower for two weeks? <laughs> That's normal, right? She ventures off to the side of the house and peers in through the window. She sees an old woman on life support. Charlie falls in through the window and meets this woman, telepathically. They get acquainted, and then she stumbles into the living room where Irv starts yelling at her for wandering around his property. Sensing that they've overstayed their welcome, Andy starts to head out, but Irv calms down. He overreacts sometimes. He takes them both to properly meet his wife, Essie. She was in a free car accident that took their son and left her like this. At night, Andy tells Charlie about the time she was kidnapped. She came out of the womb very warm, but soon after, her temperature skyrocketed. Some men came to take her, but Andy explains that him and his daughter have a telepathic link. He can sense her. He used his power to find her and confront the baddies. Using his telepathic powers, he convinced one of the goons to clap his partner and then forget how to breathe. That day changed him forever, and he has Charlie promise him that she'll never use her powers to hurt people. Animals are fair game, though. In the morning, Andy wakes up early due to a TV. He goes to the sound and sees Irv watching the news. The broadcast details a fugitive on the run. It's Andy. He pops into the room and tells Irv he's innocent, but Irv doesn't believe him. Plus, he's had a bit too much angry juice. He lunges at Andy, but Andy puts him down. Then, Charlie enters the room and starts spouting out the truth behind Essie's accident. She told him, telepathically. Irv was there that day, driving. He got in an argument, lost control of the car, and the rest is history. And that's why they're after us, Andy adds. And now, the coppers were here. Irv had called them. He went out to tell them that it was all a mistake. He had just been having a weird dream. Inside, Charlie was starting to lose control of herself. She could sense someone watching them from outside. Suddenly, gunshots, officers down. It was Rainbird, trying out the sniper roll. The cops went running for cover as Rainbird unloaded. Even poor Irv gets clapped. Charlie realizes who's out there and charges to avenge her mother. But then they kinda just stand there with Rainbird putting down his gun. Andy commands his daughter to run, then gets into a staring contest with him. His eyes begin to get slightly irritated. And then, Rainbird just kinda walks away. He spots Charlie running off into a field, but then she disappears. Ah, it was just an illusion thanks to Andy's powers. Why couldn't he just make him forget to breathe? Ah, whatever. Rainbird subdues Andy. Then, a bunch of DSI agents arrive on the scene and put on special contact lenses that protect them from Andy's power. He gives it a shot anyway, and they bully him for trying. At headquarters, Rainbird is scolded for making such a big scene with the police, 
but when the topic turns to Charlie, Rainburn has a warning. He felt her power and now feels a sort of connection with her. After, Andy is interrogated in a very blue room. What? It looks cool. The CEO lady asks him if he too has a connection with Charlie, perhaps even a stronger one. He does, but he stays silent. She wants him to call her over. We cut to Charlie in the woods. Suddenly, she hears a voice. She looks around and finds the DSI headquarters materialize in front of her. Now knowing what she has to do, Charlie gets to work training. With a little trial and error, we've got ourselves a campfire. And boiling water. That ought to be enough to storm the castle. As far as transportation, Charlie's got an idea. She wanders a neighborhood until she spots three kids biking around. They begin to circle around her, launching insults her way. She proceeds to unlock her dad's power and commands a boy to give up his bike. The other gives up his sandwich. Equality moment. Charlie bikes off to the final stage. Her first target, a man walking to his car talking to his pregnant wife. Oh, he ain't gonna make it. Inside, Charlie calmly asks him to answer some questions, but he's flipping out. He swears he doesn't have a gun, but when she inspects his badge, it says he's a full-on agent. He insists he's just an IT guy, but in Charlie's mind, that's even worse. Computers fry your brain. So, she fries him to a crisp. As the crispy man sits there sizzling, Charlie recounts her father's advice. She puts him out of his misery. With the man's badge, she makes it in and sinks past all the guards. Though, soon a group of soldiers close in from behind. However, she manages to make it to her father, who is shocked she's there. Truth is, he never called for her. It was someone else. Rainbird. CEO lady appears, looming over Charlie's dad. She explains that if he pushes one more time, his brain will explode. The same fate could find her, but she claims DSI can help her master her powers. As she continues, her argument starts to become a bit convincing, so Andy steps in. He does what he should have done a long time ago. He cracks his neck, stares into Charlie's eyes, and finally pushes her. He commands her to burn everything down, no matter the cost. She obliges, starting with her father. RIP to the CEO as well. Then, she unlocks a new power. Hacking. With all the doors open, Rainbird seizes the moment to act up. Charlie runs into some guards and they're kind of being hotheads. And these guys? Uh, friendly fire is not allowed. Finally, there's this lady. She tells Charlie she can guide her to freedom. But Charlie literally says, no joke. Liar, liar, pants on fire. And she sets her ablaze. Based. As Charlie continues through the facility, she runs into a new type of foe. They have heat-resistant armor. She spits some serious fire at them, but it just doesn't get through. So much for nuclear explosions. At wit's end, Charlie falls to her knees. The end is near, but then, Rainbird clutches up, scoring an easy triple. I guess he's a good guy now. That said, he knows what he did and stands down to face Charlie's judgment. The water around him begins to steam, but she stops, sparing him. Charlie makes it outside with the facility exploding behind her, even though she kind of barely did anything. With her power spent, she collapses, but Rainbird is there to pick her back up. Moral of the story, normal Cheetos are better.